So good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, distinguished participants. It is my great pleasure to address the shipping community in the, at this prominent forum. I would like, of course, to thank Nikos Olga Bornozis for the invitation following another outstanding event. Quite recently in New York, we had a very, we had a great time there. And now I see that they never stop uh, preparing uh, such uh, impressive events. It is true that our government, the Kyriakos Mitsotakis government, has safely been navigating uncharted waters, accelerating the green transition and fostering energy security in disruptive times. Shipping has been a key enabler of our energy security. Let me say that 78 LNG carriers originated from, originating from 10 different countries arrived at Revithusa Terminal. It is a gasification terminal that we have here in Athens last year, allowing us to reduce our dependence on Russian gas to 34% when the previous year our dependence amounted at 50 almost percent and a few years ago 100% of the gas that we were using were coming from Russia. So international dialogues shipping is often perceived as a puzzling CO2 contributor accounting for 3% of global emissions with 40% of the sector transporting fossil fuels. Notably, shipping is expected to transport 50% of renewable fuels and stimulate demand requiring 50 million tons of green hydrogen per year by 2050, according to IRENA projections if we want shipping industry to participate to carbon neutrality. The last turbulent year, ladies and gentlemen, has demonstrated that the green transition is our only option to mitigate multiple extraordinary and global challenges. The climate crisis, skyrocketing energy prices, and destabilizing geopolitics. In this challenging landscape, we are actively transforming Greece into a regional hub, both for gas and green energy, by steadily enhancing our energy diversification and autonomy. I would like to outline some key policies and facts. First, we are totally redefining our energy mix. We will have phased out all our coal plants by 2028, and we will triple our renewable capacity by 2030. Renewables supply almost 50% of our electricity consumption today and will have escalated to 80% by the end of the decade. Natural gas retains, of course, a significant role as a transitional fuel. To achieve stability and synergies, we will have deployed eight gigawatt of storage systems by 2030 and tap 2.7 gigawatt of offshore wind. This path will also redefine our ports at and shipyards. We're initiating ambitious strategies for renewable fuels, including 1.2 gigawatt of electrolyzers for green hydrogen production. We're doubling our electricity interconnections in all directions with, our, all, with all our neighboring countries. We're tripling our LNG infrastructure, simultaneously redrawing the energy map in Southeast Europe and the East Mediterranean. And finally, we're investing almost 1 billion euro every year for the energy upgrading and the energy efficiency of our buildings. Overall, we have stimulated a green revolution across the entire country, from remote islands to coal regions. Last year, we deployed a record level of almost 2 gigawatt of additional renewables, which is eight times higher than the annual rate of three years ago. We are proud that Greece was ranked second in the world when it comes to the attractiveness for renewable investments, according to EY's report earlier this year. This huge green momentum, along with Fit for 55 provisions and the upcoming IMO regulations, will unfold new opportunities for the maritime sector. 
I would like to mention some interesting developments. The share of LNG in Greece elevated to 44% in 2022 versus 32% in 2021. More than 50, almost 60% of this 44% came from the United States when four years ago we were receiving zero cargoes from the United States. 148 slots have already been booked over the next five years, which is really impressive. In record time, we extended LNG storage by 65% via an FSU, a floating storage unit, allowing ship-to-ship -ship services. Greek shipping companies are currently investing in more than 60 LNG carriers, capturing almost 15% of the global order, group, group, order book. Europe will continue to need around 200 BCM of LNG in 2040 and beyond, according to Reichstag Energy. Also, shipping will be instrumental for the decarbonization of our industry, transporting CO2 to carbon capture and storage facilities. We are preparing one, we are developing one in Prinos, funded by the Resilient and Recovery Fund. Furthermore, as the Russian aggression in Ukraine is tragically still ongoing, our government is deploying crucial massive infrastructure fostering regional integration. Greece has placed among the most resilient countries to crisis scenarios in European risk assessments. Remarkably, we exported 2.6 BCM of gas to Bulgaria and to other northern countries versus just 0 0.7 BCM in 2021, demonstrating solidarity to our neighbors. Also, please let me underline some infrastructure milestones. First, following the operation of the IGB pipeline last October, which is a game changer for the region, the FSRU in Alexandropolis will have been completed by the end of the year. This strategic facility will unravel new export routes up to Hungary and Ukraine, exploiting the reverse flow in the Transbalkan pipeline and other possibilities. Second, another FSRU in Corinth this time, near Athens, is close to the final investment decision, while three others have been licensed by the regulator. Hence, LNG capacity in Greece may well exceed 20 BCM within the next two years. Third, a new gas pipeline, 100% hydrogen ready, with North Macedonia will shortly enter the construction phase, unfolding new routes. Fourth, our electricity interconnections are rapidly expanding with all neighboring countries. Fifth, putting all these elements together, Greece can leverage its unique, its unique position close to North Africa and the Middle East and evolve into a hydrogen gateway to Europe. Part of this hydrogen will be transported by ships and simultaneously be consumed by ships as ammonia may be methanol or hydrogen. And finally, moreover, an oil pipeline from Alexandropolis to Burgas this time has attracted new interest. Undeniably, Europe needs a new vision both for energy and shipping grounded on reality and affordability, on a license and new tools. Greece has demonstrated itself to have played a pivotal role in driving energy market reforms at the European level, such as the windfall tax mechanism for electricity producers. We initiated, we applied last July, and Europe adapted two months later in October of 2022. Regarding the ETS expansion to shipping, we have made several interventions and will continue doing so, be sure about this, to ensure that this transition happens smoothly with fair terms. The ETS revenues should be redirected primarily to financing maritime decarbonization. The new European state aid rules should also support vessels apart from port infrastructure. Alternative facts are Alternative fuels is a fact and are among our vision. But uh, we should have in mind that LNG is currently the only commercially available solution. 
At COP27, Greece joined the Green Shipping Challenge, declaring our commitment to sustainable ports and marine transportation via concrete initiatives. To conclude, with the right policies, the shipping sector can evolve into a catalyst for the green transition, stimulating demand and supply of renewable fuels. Working together, we can shape these creative and innovative solutions to safeguard a sustainable future for our citizens and for future generations. Thank you. Thank you.